So the man of the evening is Albert Einstein, and I will quickly try and explain okay. the theory of relativity to you as quickly as I can. And this is a huge paradigm shift for me when I remember that usually my speeches are about the lines of Mick Jagger, etc. So don't expect this to be too highbrow, but this, as far as I know, is what the theory of relativity means. Thank you, Albert Einstein. What it means basically is that prior to the great man Albert Einstein, we didn't realise that the idea of motion was something that uh, is differentiated by those that are in motion and also those that are observing that motion. So what I mean by that, I think, is that if <laughs> you look at me and say, how fast are you moving? Well, I'm not moving at all. But if you could get a million miles away from me, you would see, in fact, that the Earth is moving at a many hundreds of thousands of kilometres per hour. So therefore, it is relative from both the observer's point of view and the person doing the motion as to what speed I am travelling at. So I will take that to another example for you. If you just bear with me, I will explain this. Here's a semi-trailer going along a road, and it's going at 100 kilometres an hour. How fast is the truck going? Well, relative to the road, it's going 100 kilometres an hour. On the back of that semi-trailer is this man here who's throwing a baseball. And he's throwing it to this man, the catcher. Behind this man throwing the baseball is a chap with a timing gun. How fast, oh, and the ball is being thrown at 70 kilometres an hour. Okay, what speed would be shown on that timing gun for the ball? Now, it's not a trick question, I'll answer it for you. This gets back to Einstein's theory of relativity. That ball would be shown at going at 70 kilometres an hour on this timing gun being on the back of the semi-trailer. But I am standing here observing all this. I am at the side of the road and I have my own timing gun. What speed do I then see that that ball is moving at? Here it becomes, you see, the theory of relativity. <laughs> Just wait a moment, please. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> this is Albert Einstein I'm trying to explain here. <laughs> Nick Jagger was the death of my knowledge prior to this. What? So I'm observing all this. I observe through my speed timing gun that the truck is moving at 100 kilometres an hour and that ball just standing still, according to that timing gun, before it leaves his hand, is also travelling at 100 kilometres an hour. So therefore, once it's in motion, travelling at 70 kilometres an hour, this timing gun here, I think, <laughs> would show 170 kilometres an hour. Therefore, I have proved for you that the great man Albert Einstein's theory of relativity is in fact true and works and is a beautiful piece of thinking because Albert Einstein was not only a mathematician, he was a very creative thinker. And his principles on time travel, etc., are astounding to read. Does everyone follow that? I'm not it's not about me tonight, but I just wanted to make the great man part of our Toastmasters evening that you might have had some sort of introduction into what is a very, very complex thought process, and that is the theory of relativity. We're going to have a lot of speeches this evening. I look forward to, if time permits, giving you a quick rundown on his other big thought, and that was E equals MC squared. I'll just take it. Quick question from the floor from the man who knows far more about this than me. I just about to ask, what would the ball's energy be? Does anyone? We've got speaking This was beautiful thinking also by Einstein, in that E stands for energy, M stands for mass, mass lets for the sake of it says your weight. Okay, it doesn't quite mean weight. And C represents the speed of light squared. Now the speed of light is a very, very big number. So let's say that the, for the sake of the argument that somehow the ball weighed one kilo, right? So one kilo times about 300,000 times 300,000 is a very big number. <laughs> so that is the energy of that baseball. It is a huge number locked up in everything. In this, in this, in this, in, in all of us is a huge, trust me, it's a huge amount of energy. If only we knew how to get that energy out of us all, we would have 
obliteration of the earth about any single one of us. If we could somehow split this thing, there'd be no more world because the energy locked up in this thing is enormous. Which got me thinking that that's why the atomic bomb was so significant because you can't know, imagine how minuscule an atom is. Really small. I can't even... <laughs> Relative to anything. And an atom is tiny. Yet somehow the scientists were able to release the energy of an atom. If you're going to do it, let's start with something really small other than a cow or something. So they release the energy from an atom and look at the obliteration that caused. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope Albert Einstein is a great man. That's just a, a quick little introduction into his remarkable thinking. I think you'd all agree with me. <laughs> greatest uh, human to have existed in the 20th century, knocking off in my mind Mick Jagger, who up until about three weeks ago was that man, but now I think our great man Albert Einstein was. <sighs> That's all we've got time for now. <laughs>